I've been thinking about my background and I want to make it green. I want to have a green background purely and simply because my fox is this beautiful rusty red colour. And red and green, of course, being complementary colours, it will just look gorgeous, I hope. And one of my favourite greens is Daniel Smith's very beautiful Cascade Green. I'm going to have a play with this. We'll also be adding some sap green in there because it's a lovely, bright, vibrant green. And I hope to be flicking some little flowers in here and there. And I'll use cadmium orange. This is the cadmium free orange. We'll need some shadows here and there. I want to make it darker around the edges of my picture. And to do that, I'm going to use Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. That's this one here. Let's get stuck in. I want to wet the paper first and the reason for this is because it will give me thinking time. You know me, I do this frequently, I want to just have time to have a bit of a panic and to think about things as I'm putting them on the paper. Now today it's a very hot sunny day and this is a really good ploy for days like today because the paper will now soak up all of the water rather than being greedy with your paint. So it will just give you a bit more time. So think on to that next time you're working in the summer. It really, really works. We look at it and we make sure that everything's shiny. I haven't painted my fox. He's still just dry. And it's worth thinking that the paper always dries more quickly around these edges. So an extra bit around there would be quite useful. I'll tell you what, should we add some salt as well? I've got some table salt here, let's have a go. Right, a little bit of cerulean blue first because I'd like to give the impression that we have some sky up here. That through the dappled shade that this little fox is sitting, well, lying in, we have some blue sky shining through the branches and this is cerulean blue lovely blue just right for the job a little bit brighter in some places why not a bit more color but you see because i've wet the page how fluid it all is and i'm not having to worry about anything it, it, it's just going on quite nicely and it's all softening. Because we have so much water as well, it will also granulate if we're lucky. So that's also brilliant. It's granulating here already, I can see it happening. And then I want to introduce a little bit of sap green down the bottom here. So come in with a bit of that. I'm just bringing it up to my fox. Not worrying over much at the moment about where things are going and what I'm doing. Just laying in some colour. So here's the sap green going in right now. This is the exciting bit. You never really know what you're going to land up with. You have a picture in your head, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work out the way you think it will. That's life, isn't it? Totally. There we go. So we've got that, that green coming up to the fox. My brush is molting. This tells me I need a new brush. And I'm not going to fiddle about and pull it around and try and get the bits out because that will just make a mess. Leave them, they'll look like grasses. Okay, let me show you this beautiful, beautiful cascade green. If we go into this, this is a lovely mixture of raw sienna and tharlow blue. And the two, if you're very lucky and you have enough water, will split and divide and work beautifully on wet paper. I'm coming in here and I want to give the impression that I have little branches coming down and I want them to be sort of frond of branches pointing down towards our little fox, almost saying, look at this little lad sitting here. You see, we can pull them down like this. So that he hopefully looks as though he's sitting in dappled shade somewhere. A bit more over here because that's all fading out. It's very wet. Darker in the corners, you see, I want I want to achieve that. Putting that through there. Let's get rid of some of those hairs on the brush. Dear, oh dear. New brush at the end of the painting, methinks. Now I want some idea of grasses up through here. Now, 
How about on my brush, I'm going to put a bit of sap green and some of the cascade green so I have both colours on the brush. Both colours like that. And again, snuggle it round the fox. Again, both colours, so a bit of sap green, a bit of cascade green, and I'm going to pull the colours up like this on the edge of the brush to make it look as though we have grasses like this. Now I said to you I wanted it to be dark around these corners here, around all of the edges, so I'm going back into the cascade green, using it quite darkly, quite thickly now, and I'm pulling that into here. And I'm loving the way it's running back up onto, under Mr Fox. So I'm using this at kind of double cream density, thickness. Pull that round and through like this. And to get rid of the drips along the edge of my tape because that will run back into the picture and will probably give me cauliflowers. So I'm not looking forward to that. And then I'm transferring to a number eight brush now, onto number eight, round number eight, like this. And this time I'm picking up my moon glow, I nearly got hold of, the Bane's grey there. And under my fox, I just want to add some shadow. Because we'd have shadow under Mr Fox. Like so. And then I need to introduce that in a couple of other places, otherwise the painting's going to look uncomfortable. We need to drop these colours hither and yon so that it balances. Now my paper's starting to dry, so I've got to be careful now because if I'm not, I'll find that it will cauliflower and I will be in trouble. So I'm just having to think now about being careful. And I'm going to drop some salt into the bottom here to make it look interesting. So let's do that next. Not too much, it's a terrible thing, but we get so excited, don't do it. I'm going to literally put that much in my hand and then because my hands are hot, Think about what you would put on your dinner, no more. Because too much, and it takes too much colour away, and then you land up with no lovely colour, but just lots and lots of weight where the salt's been. So I'm going to shake that up in the bin, and then I want to come in with a dry brush, and I'm going to just come round the edges of the fox, because I don't want there to be puddles of water around the outside of him, which will wick back into the colour that I've painted on and it will again give me a halo around the fox, I don't want it. And then I need to wait and see what happens. But I'm just thinking to myself, just before I do, just before I do, I'm going to take the orange like this and I'm going to take another brush and here and there I just want to drop few orange flowers. Just like this. That's all. That'll do. And that will really brighten the whole thing up. And now it has to dry. Well here we are. The salt's worked. Very happy with that. And I have to say to you, if you decide that you are happy with the way the salt looks at any particular point in time, you can stop all of the action by just putting a hairdryer on it and it will stop at that point. If not, sometimes it can keep going, keep going and it can be frustrating, it takes too much paint away. In this instance, I'm chuffed to bits, don't know why it's happened, it's irrelevant, it doesn't matter, it's the flow on the paper, but the way it's swept the salt has kind of pulled the colour out. It looks as though it's little things growing up, upwards. So that's worked really well today. I'm happy with that. But we can see the granulation down here. And the other thing that's really, really interesting is if we look at this moon glow down here, we can see where 
the salt has taken out the purple and it's left the blue behind. So that's really pretty, that's, that's a nice thing to land up with. Happy with that. Who knew? When I look at him and I'm looking for the palest, the next palest colour, I'm looking at this absolutely glorious kind of golden yellowy orange here. And the nearest we can achieve here, um, a good colour for this, is raw sienna. What does raw sienna look like? Let me show you. It's a scrumptious colour. I like it very much and use it a lot. Using it thick and neat, it's like this. But when we pull it out, it's this lovely transparent golden kind of yellow. And that's pretty jolly close, you see. What I want to do is come through Mr Fox and paint all of him this lovely colour. Because that would be my base colour and then I can add the other colours on top of that. So, let's take this raw sienna and we're going to use it really quite thinly. I don't want to be too excitable with it at all. So lots of water. Let's see how we go. Yeah, you see, it's, we want this kind of light, light colour. So I'm bringing that up around, right up to the edges. Just gently feed it into the paper. All over. White areas as well. There we go, around there, up to where we had our mask using a bit of water because I want to vary the depth of the colour as well. I've gone over the edge, so let's just wipe that away with my finger. Oh, that's what you call living on the edge, isn't it? have to be careful about that. Fall off the edge and it all goes horribly wrong. Now, I want to pull this through here along his tail. I used to have a friend and he always used to say that his life, he didn't live on the edge and he didn't live in the fast lane. He lived on the hard shoulder. He said he was still waiting for something to happen even when he was 30. I wonder what he's doing now. I hope something did happen. I hope he's off, off that uh, hard shoulder now. I want to make sure that that is clean in there. So I'm just using a dry brush, thirsty brush. And I want to just pull that out of there because this is the white of his eye and I really, really would like that to be, you know, nice and white. Now we're going to start working into our fox and we're going to do it a piece at a time. If we tried to do them all in one go, it would just become too overwhelming and we would have to move too quickly. We've got to be a little bit speedy with this particular technique. Now I'm going to need this rather scrumptious burnt sienna. This is my next colour. And we're looking at this gorgeous orangey brown. I love this colour. And this is where we want to move into next. And we have to have something here for this particular technique to scratch with. And we've got all sorts of options here, all sorts of options that you can enjoy. You could use a cocktail stick, so that's one thing that you could have a go at. You could get a bit of bamboo from the garden and just shave off the edge, the top like this. And you can make this point as sharp or as flat and as blunt as you want it to be. So, you know, I have another of these and it's really, really quite, quite um, sharp. Another option is to go into a um, hardware store and to buy a piece of doweling and then you can shave, sharpen the tip of the doweling or indeed you can take a paintbrush and you could put this into a pencil sharpener and you could sharpen that. Anything that's going to scratch. My method, that, oh here we go, no it's not. Where's my doweling? Oh. My favourite method is that this is a porcupine quill and this was my grandmother's and she used to have that because she used it to punch holes, used it as a bradle to punch holes in leather when she was repairing things, handbags, wallets, shoes, 
anything that was tough, she used it as a bradle and it was in her needlework kit. Now, I don't really need it for that and I kept it because it was just something that Gran had. But I found that it's so useful for the technique that I want to use here. And I it, each um, porcupine quill has got a blunt end like this and a really, really sharp end. So you have choices as to the, the line that you can make. And the technique that we're going to use follows like this. We're going to use this brown, this lovely warm orangey brown. And let me bring you in close so that you can see what I'm going to do. And with this, we can scratch. And what you're doing is you're damaging the paper and the paint is running into the scratches and leaving these lines. So that's the thick end. And here we have the thin, sharp end. This is fabulous for veins, if you want to do veins on flowers or leaves or indeed wings. You can imagine that being a dragonfly's wing. But it's a, a fabulous tool and it's a really, really good, good technique. The thing is, you have to just remind yourself that you can only do this once. You know, you can't go, if you, oh, I don't like that, you can't go in and you can't change it. Just bear that in mind. So you have to accept the brush mark you make. Now, something else I would like to show you with this particular technique is we can go in here with the paint and I can paint up to the edge of my fox. So say this is his back, this is the edge of the fox. We can go in and we can make all of our lines. And if we pull them out, this drags the paint with it when it's still wet. This only works when it's still wet, of course. And that will give you all these little fine lines around the edge of our fox. So this is quite a handy technique to put in your repertoire. Let's see how it works now in practice. I think the very first area that we'll try is this little triangle here on his back because this will give us the feel for how it works. Bear in mind, if you can see this, that it's darker here in this part of the triangle. Ignore this dark shadow for a minute, we're going to put that on very, very last. But it's darker orange here and paling out to the edge. Let's just look at this shape. So a good way to deal with this is just damp brush, not soaking wet, so just sort of damp and snail trail like this. So just rub it against the edge of the water pot and I'm coming in there and I'm just going to dampen that area again because it'll keep it a bit wetter for me today when it's a hot day. And then if I come in and I pick up my gorgeous orangey brown and I'm going to put it in there and then I said to you, didn't I, that I wanted it darker in this corner. So we're coming in there and just doing that. Now if you get these blodgy blobs where you lift your brush off here and here, come in and pull it back. Just pull it back. All right. And then I'm going to use my sharp tool here. And I know the fur goes over his back, so I'm going to follow the pattern of the fur. And I'm going to start by pulling it out first on the edge, like this, and you get all these lovely interesting little marks. Now the important thing is your paper is very tender when it's like this. It's wet and it's vulnerable. So when you start to feel that your paper is too soft and it's looking as though you could damage it, stop, just stop. Because there is nothing to stop you when this is bone dry again, going back in and doing it again. But when it's soft like this and tender, you could damage your paper and then you'll land up with holes and tears. So just do what you can do leave it, go back later. We're now going to come in and do his back. 
And again, it's darker here along the back edge of his spine, on his back of his neck, and this is his shoulder. So I'm going to come in again. I'm just going to dampen the whole area. So I'm ignoring his paw for a minute. This is his leg. I'm just coming up under his ear and just around to his face. So that's just wetting that there like that. And then I want to come in with my brown. I know I want it dark around the edge, so don't be afraid of it. Put the colour in. Put it round. And then with water, we can come in with a damp brush and you can just soften all of that like that. And we'll come back and we'll join up with that later. Now the fur this time goes this way to the left. So I'm coming in here and I want to, I'm going to start with all the edges first. So that I get all these little hairs over the edge of the body. Like this. See how sweet that is, it just pulls it all out for me, it does the job, I'm not even having to work very hard at it. Now the fur sweeps across him from his ear. So little brush marks, little strokes. Lots and lots. And then cross over each other. Because fur doesn't all lie exactly straight. He's not been to the barbers, so he's not smart and neat. This is a wild fox, so although he may have had a good wash recently, he's still going to have fur that's a little bit sort of crisscross and shaped. But look how beautifully that's giving us our marks that we need. We're not having to really work at it at all, are we? And the key is making sure that you get that wet enough in the first place so that you can do all this and it doesn't dry too quickly. So as you can see, I'm still going. So here's his leg. So this time now the fur will be folding around and over his leg. But I'll come back to this again later and we'll give this another go. But for now, whilst it's there and it's wet, let's not waste the opportunity. There we are. That's lovely, I've got some nice texture there. And it's starting, the paper's starting to say, oh, I've had enough now, you know. So leave it alone. There you go. I don't think I'm going to get much more joy out of that, so I'm just going to leave it be. And we'll move on and we'll do another bit of our fox. Now, how about his forehead down here? I only want to come down to the eyes, really. I'm just going to do this area here. I'm not going to worry too much about his ears yet. And I just want to come into this area here. Let's wet it. So down here, wet it into the area that we've just done. Up to the top of the eyes like this. There we are. And then come back pick up some more of this orangey brown, this is the burnt sienna, and I know it's dark down here. So even more so. This is dark down here, down to between his eyes, and across around here. Soften the edges. This is rinsed, Dab, dab, and then I'm going to come in that way and soften like that. Rinse, dab, dab, and then I come in this side and soften like that. And that's real water brush and, and paint control. All right. I know I want it to be a bit lighter down this side of his head. We can see it here. So what I'll do is just swipe it with a brush and pull some colour out. Okay, and then we scratch. And this fur comes up from between his nose 
and it splays out either side it goes back over his head like this but this here stands up like this so direction is really impossible in, important not impossible <laughs> I hope it's not impossible oh dear should we take that as an outtake or should we keep it in and then we're pulling it up through here. In the direction is really, really critical because this is what gives you the impression that it's fur. So I'm actually swizzling my stool round so that I can get at the, to the right angle for what I need for all of this. See how it splays out from between his eyes like this. Really important. Little bits of fur here coming up his ears. And then it's at this soft bit, love this bit on an animal. Cats and dogs, that very soft, teeny tiny little bit of fur that they have there. Absolutely delightful. So pull that, because now it's going to start falling around his face, coming over like this. And you're getting all this texture just by scratching. This is why such a, it's such a marvellous technique. There we are, like that. So we've done that there on his forehead. So the next thing we need to do is this area here. We're going to think about all of this. And again, let's wet it. So join up here, under the eye, down to the tail, round that paw up under the eye and then just gently gently pull that together zip it up like that and then we add our colour let's have a think about where we need it to be if we look at the picture we can see we need his nose to be brown for sure and he's got a much darker so this is just thicker paint it's darker there down his nose there and then we're dark through here you've got the white area there here and then this is just let's just join it up for now let's just gently do this if you've got hard edges clean it dab dab on your cloth and then just come from the outside into it into it like that and then we're going to have a little scratch of this now again think about it think about it these are teeny hairs so i want little little scratches now no good doing big long hair on his nose it's not the way it works little tiny hairs so little scratches little scratches digging in and scratching. Now they're getting longer here and again now they're going to curve over his cheek and under his eye. There we are. See how that's shaping his face and then there's his cheekbone so we need to curve that up around his cheekbone like that and then it sweeps out like this across the side of his face and we can come up here and we can join up now with this some of them we can sweep up into his ear and we can pull this across here like this Pull the brown out into that clearer area there because that will look like the hairs coming out across. There we go, and we'll leave that. Let's now move on to his flank here. 
where he's sitting. And we can incorporate this little bit of um, his cheekbone here in the side here, we can see it. So we can just colour that in as well whilst we're at it. Because all we're going to do is just dampen the area as we've done before. Come through, pop some water on there. And then we're going to make this quite dark in here. So here's my nice orangey brown. This is my burnt sienna. And I'm going to fade it out as it comes across his rump because we know for a fact that this over here is really quite light, quite white. But I want this to be quite dark in here. Because it would be shaded, wouldn't it? So there we go. Now there's one of those blobs as you lift off again, so clean it. Dab, dab to get the water off. Get hold of the blob and just pull it back. There we are. Alright, so now from here, this goes across his rump like this and curve it. Because if we curve it, it will make it look as though the body itself is rounded. So I'm going to come out from the edge if I can. There's not enough paint really there to do much. I'm to curve the whole thing like this. And that gives us our long, longer fur there on his flank. There we are. Just like that. So now really that just gives us this leg here. Not much left of that to be honest with you. We can dampen that just here. This is his tail here. So it's just this bit of leg and I'm going to come back up and wet the area that we had worked on previously. And now take our lovely burnt sienna. I want it dark here where it comes down, curves round and down into the ground where he's lying on the ground. And then I'm going to make that a bit darker along there so that we understand that that is where it's under his tail. And then I can come back and I can work some more into this. I've left it light on top here so that we can see that he's got some white hair. His hair will be paler there. So we're just going to scratch that. And then whilst I'm in the area, I'm just going to come into his paw. You can't see an awful lot of this little leg. So I'm just going to come in there, pop some of this colour on it here, this burnt sienna. Two little claws there that we can see. And here we're looking at his foot. Tip of it, we're looking at his foot from this angle, so you're seeing a few little claws. This is all fur of his tail and of his neck. So let's just give that some texture, and then we're going to go all out on his ears and his tail. Now you'll notice that with his ear, I've come over the edges here and it's not going to work with the fur that I've got on the picture. This isn't dark. Therefore, we can deal with this. We need to use a nice flat brush. So I'm going to use this. This is my coma brush. And I'm going to use this damp. And I can come in and I can just work that away with the edge of a flat brush. It's more difficult to do that with a round brush, but with a flat brush, it'll be a nylon brush, it's, it'll go in there and it'll scrub it. And I can also get rid of that hard line. Go into the edge that you want to soften. There you go. And then that gives me a nice clean pair of ears again, doesn't it? Now, 
Let's do this ear next. This is going to be fun because we've got a couple of different colours involved in this, haven't we? We've got, this is our kind of uh, Payne's Grey. And here we've got the furry brown. How are we going to do this? It'll be very difficult to pull the brown up into the black. It wouldn't work, would it? It just won't work. What we're going to have to do is pull the black down into the brown. So, I want to wet this whole ear. Like that. And then I'm going to take my lovely burnt sienna and I intend to pull that up the ear like this to there. This is pale, this bit here. So let's just see if we can give it, give this a bit of kind of variation in tonal value. I want a bit of darker. So I'm using this quite thickly here. I want a bit of darker. Burnt sienna there. And then here, there's a lighter patch where the sun's caught it. So dry brush, dry it on your cloth, and then come in with your dry brush and just lift some colour out like that. And then the tip of this ear, I'm going to use my Payne's Grey. So I come into that and I'm going to give him a lovely curved rounded ear like this. And I'm going to just drop it in like that. And then I take my scratchy tool, whatever my scratchy tool, oh, and look, I can pull the black down into the brown. Now I want fairly small scratches on this because we've got to bear in mind that this is his ear and it's not long fur. So little scratches. And if you feel that that's not black enough, now that it's dried a little bit, I can come into the tip of his ear. There are bits on foxes that are really dark. And then I can just drop in. Now, see, this is thick paint. This is almost emulsion thickness that you'd use painting the walls at home. So I can just drop that in and that gives you a really good contrast on his ear. Really, really good contrast. The next thing I intend to do, I want a smaller brush. So I'm going into, this is a number six this time, and all around the outer edge of this ear, I just want to wet it. Do you notice a theme here? With the let's wet it first thing, oh, it gives you so much more credibility, so much more ability to move your paint around. And with the burnt sienna, I'm looking at his ear and the colour is only really in a few places. This particular brown isn't all over everywhere. So it comes down to here, like this. It's quite dark up there on the tip of his ear. And with that, little scratches again, little scratches. And they go up his ear, up his ear. On that side, you can bring some out into the open if you want to, but not too much. They don't really have fluffy, fluffy ears. And then this side, hairs come out this way so all the hairs on the ears go upwards to the point of the ear really some of them curve round the ear here as we come down the ear but that will do us quite nicely thank you very much whilst it's still wet you would be able to see the tip of the black just around the edge there. So I'm just dropping that in and I'm just going to nudge it and budge it and smudge it like that. That's all. Just around the tip of the ear. Now we've got to wait for that to dry because if we don't, 
it will all go bonkers when we when we go into it and we want to do something else so just for now leave it be why don't we come down and have a look at his eyes so taking a number two I'm using my burnt sienna again and I'm using it this time quite thinly because I'm just putting in oh, not enough water just going to put in the colour of his iris and his eyes are the same colour as his fur but it's very light down here so it's a thirsty brush I'm just lifting a little bit out all right just lifted a little bit out down there. This eye is really, really quite dark. We can see the white of the eye, but even saying that, it's quite grey. So I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow grey in that corner there and blend it onto the white of the eye so that it's not white, white. Don't want it to be white, white. And then we don't see an awful lot of the white on this eye either. It's the same sort of story. So using the Payne's Grey, I want to come up into that corner there and into that corner there. And then I'm going to just gently, gently smudge it and budge it. Leaving it lighter in the middle here. I want it to be lighter there. Now the pupil of his eye is really dark, so I'm going all out there with Payne's Grey. And I'm coming in here and I want to drop it in. So I'm putting that in there like that, very darkly. And then I want to take a little bit of a highlight out. So thirsty brush, come in and just lift a little bit of black out. Do it again, clean it, dry it, and this is lifting with a thirsty brush. And it will give you that highlight in the corner of the eye, and he's looking at you. Now we haven't got shadow in that eye yet, but I'm not worried about that, we'll deal with that in a minute, in a minute. Let's put the pupil in this eye. We're still using the number two, come in and I'm going to gently, gently, it's round, let's get the shape right, really important. You have to be careful because this really is lumpy bumpy paper and of course it will try and lead you astray, of course it will, you'll be trying to work your way around the bobbles in the paper and I just want to lift again a little bit of a highlight out of that too, like that. So he's got two little beady eyes on us. He's noticed that we're here and he's watching us. Now it has to be said, with the rest of his eyes, let's concentrate now on what we would do and get them right. Let's get them right. We're going to mix up some Payne's Grey and some Burnt Umber. Put them together and make this sludgy sort of brown, browny grey colour. And with that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to give him his eyeliner. So with Mr Fox, we would have this. Put it in and the bottom like this. And we're going to come right the way round where we've painted our white of his eye, like that. And we're also going to come right away around the iris, like this. All right. And we are going to dampen the brush, we're going to rinse it, dab, dab, and then come up into this and nudge it and budget and smudge it.
and then I want you to do exactly the same in here. Gently, carefully, in a controlled fashion, I want all of that to be grey, like that. I want you to get hold of that and I'd like you to just pull it and manipulate it so that you've got this kind of triangle and it's not actually closed. I've opened up this end. We need to let that dry because we're going to put a shadow across there, but we're not doing that until it's bone dry. We're going to do it in a minute. This eye, I'm going to use this Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber Mix because this is the fur that's under the brow of the eye. So it's really dark in there, very dark in there. And it's also very dark under here. So he looks as though he's got these dark eyes. But what we'll do is take a damp brush, rinse it, dab, dab, and above, come in from above, and in a zigzag motion, you're going to soften that top like that. Like that. So that gives you the shadow that's under his brow. You can also rinse and dab, dab, and I'd like you to come in and do exactly the same underneath. Like that. And whilst you're there, make sure that it's nice and smart against his rump. So you've got these two little beady eyes looking at you, looking at you. Okay. Now that his eye is dry, let's just be very brave and we're going to take this same dark mix and we want to use it very thinly because it's better to do this twice than to do it once and do it wrong. So let's just make sure that it's very, very thin and watery. And what we're going to do is just lay a shadow right across, it, not where you've put your highlight in that black, but put a shadow, see that's not dark enough, it's not dark enough right across there. Still not dark enough. So I can still go again as long as I don't move paint. That's better. And that gives me the shadow across his eye and makes him look quite mysterious and interesting, doesn't it? Quite sleepy fox. The next thing we really have to do is his ear. And to be able to do this, We've got to come in here and work into it with the dark. Let's just take a mixture of our Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber. I want it more Payne's Grey than Burnt Umber. And now I'm going to come across here and I want to fill that in and I want to give the impression of fur in his ear. So I'm just doing that by flicking the brush backwards and forwards. We're looking at the edge of the fur in his ear. That's what I'm going for. And then I'm going to fill it in to the cuff of the ear like that. And then I'm going to use my tool to pull the fur out over the edge of his ear. this will be little bits of black fur over the edge of his ear like this. Now with the rest of his ear here you can get hold of the black and you can pull it into this area to give the impression of this fur being shattered at the edge so that you're looking that yellow fur here. We need to leave that for a minute. It's got to dry before we can do something else with it. So pull it all through around the edges and this will make it look fluffy. Oh, it's drying so quickly. 
I could potentially come in there and help it along with some more water. Gosh, can't get over the heat. So pull it, get those black hairs out there into that body because this is what's going to make it look soft. I'm even going to go back with a little bit more black around this area here. You can do that as long as it's still wet. It's when it starts to dry and you could have fear of cauliflowers. But for now, this is all still shiny wet, so I know that I can get away with that. So now I want long hairs. So within the tail itself, I know I want nice long hair, so I'm looking at this kind of thing. Now mine's really drying so quickly that I might be thinking about coming in again and just helping it along. I might add another little bit of my brown. because I really want to get some textured fur in there. I don't struggle with it if, it if the wretched stuff dries too quickly. I'm going to stop at that point because my paper is starting to feel a bit fragile and I don't want to push it too far. Well, he's looking quite good, isn't he? What we need to do now is just add a few bits and pieces of darker colour to him to give him some shape. And how do we go about that? We're going to do it gently, carefully, one little bit at a time and we have to put water in first. What I'm meaning by that, let's have a little look. We've got some dark shapes on him here. If we wet that area, we can then pick up our burnt umber and Payne's Grey mix, and we can just gently add a little dark. It'll run and it'll blur and that's fine. So we can control it by rinsing, dab, dab, and then come into it from the side that you want to soften. And just carefully, carefully pull some away. I want to put something here under his eye. A bit of water, this shadow down here through under his eye. I'm going to use Payne's Grey actually because I don't think the burnt umber mix was really dark enough. So from his eye, down here, along his cheek like that. Rinse, dab it, and then come in from the edges. And we can soften that like that. He's got shadow up from his eye here. So there. Like that. And then when we look at him he's got another one this side. So I'm just going to come in there. Put that there like that. I want to put some dark fur here 
it's actually darker along these pores because they also have little black pores. So I'm just going to come through there. Just add some dark along there. And we're going to just soften that like that. If you want some darker areas, there's a little bit of really dark burnt sienna there. So I can come in. I can just tickle that in like that. His little paw is really dark, so again I'm going to come into that and I want to just find my dark. I'm going to put that little dark paw in there. In a minute I'll put two very dark little claws in there. I want his eye to be just a little bit browner. So some of that here, in here, let's just... Now we do have this big shadow on his rump to deal with and again it, the safest thing there is to come in and wet it first. I don't want to go black black on that I don't think. I'd like to take my burnt umber and my Payne's Grey and do it with that I think. We'll try it. If we don't like it, we can always go back in later. But I'm not going to go in hard and fast. I want to put the water in first, like this, so that I can then control what's happening here. I want that shadow to run along his flank like that, and then it does this. And it's that that gives you that beautiful shape of his little face. We'll soften this again, damp brush, just a damp brush. And come in politely from the outside and soften it. And that gives you that hard shadow there. I've missed one on his forehead. So up here on his forehead here, he's got quite a dark patch of the burnt sienna. Put it in, rinse and dab, and then come in and soften from underneath and soften from above. Like that. And then that also, he's got a very dark patch there on the bottom of his ear and a stripe along his middle of his forehead. So through there, we've got the dark stripe and we've also got quite a dark patch there. So again, I'm coming in and I'm softening. This isn't dark enough, so we can go in again, dampen it, and I can just come in with the Payne's Grey, pop that in there, there we are, it's better. For the next bit of excitement, we're going to use this brush, this is called a rake brush, Some, sometimes it's called a coma brush. And it's been cut through on the top third to make it, can you see, you can see that, you can see that quite well actually. It's been vandalised on the top and it looks like a comb. And we're going to use this to paint some of the fur on his tail. I want to use the Payne's Grey and the important thing about this brush 
is that we don't get a pattern going with it. You can use it like this for fur. Look at that. Really useful. I would keep a piece of paper next to me because the key is don't go in with too much on the brush because it, you need a dry brush technique for this. And we're going to come in and we're going to really work it so that we have these lovely bits of fur, the black fringing on his tail. And the key is keep the brush moving because if you use the same movement each time, you land up with the same pattern each time. So move your brush, tweak it, twiddle it. <coughs> Turn it round. Make sure, see that's too wet. Some of it I'm sweeping backwards, some of them I'm pulling forward. Now let's get the texture in that tail. You can pull some of them out past the tail so that it gives you an extra pull on the fur. You get the fur coming over the body of the tail again, which is quite nice. And pull plenty of it from the end of the tail where it would be black. So just enough water to make it a, a dry brush technique. And not too much of it, you're trying to give the impression of a haze of black fur here and there. This is the long coat that comes through his normal coat. And some of it, it just looks like dots where you're looking at it head on. And it's very dark here around this area. down through here. So use your paint a little more thickly there. Like this. And that really is the joy of a dry brush technique. It can give you that lovely look of floofiness. Now you can also use that for the white. Okay, next thing is white. White gouache. Don't put it in your palette because it makes a mess. Makes a mess. I have a little pussycat who adores cat milk. And the cat milk has these beautiful tops. And it's the top that I'm going to use today to put my white paint in. I'm going to put my white gouache in this lid because I know I can use this now. When I'm finished with it, it can go in the bin. It's a one time only use, but I don't want to have this stuff in my palette. It makes a mess. It leaves a residue that you just can't shift. So I don't want it, don't want anything to do with it. I'm loading up with this and I'm looking at having this double cream thickness. I don't want that too wet, but make sure that you have it thick enough that when you put it on, it shows. And we're going to come into some of the white areas and we're going to lay in some highlights. Look at 
We want these white hairs that we can see here. And contrary to all expectations, you need the dark colour behind to be able to let the white show up. So this is why we painted with the darker colour in the first instance, so that we had this now. I want some of the white on the tail. So I'm putting that in the lighter areas of the tail here. Like this. So that gives us the highlight. Now I need it, don't I, on the on his little face here. So this is why this dark is so important on his face because now when we lay this in, it's going to show. And I'm using the side of the brush for this, not not the flat of it because it's too much. It's too big sure we've got the paint at the right consistency and just pull some white through like that like that I know I've got white up here along the side of his face so we lift all too much too much too much and if that happens just come in get rid of it don't want that much Some white in through there. And that kind of doubles back on itself and comes back down to here. So this is dry brush technique using the paint quite dry. And then we need some through here. because there's white hair here. And again, because we've got that dark there, when I put these lines through it, now you can see it because it shows up against the dark that I put in underneath. So light against dark, dark against light. All of this is white through here. There we are. And we've got to look at him and we've got to now think to ourselves, have we got the right balances that we need with everything? Does it all work? Does it read properly? Can we see it? Do we understand it? little white hairs up there and I don't think we do ourselves a disservice if we pulled some fine hairs up into his ear from there do you like that that will do like that and we could put some fine, fine hairs up on his forehead here. Just a few. Like that. I'm smudging it with my finger to soften where the brush initially goes down. Just to soften it. See, this is a little bit hard down here, isn't it? So if we just take a damp brush come in and we just soften that a little bit it's more pleasing to look at there we are so do we need to do very much else probably not I think what I would like to do however is come into this foreground and just soften some of that a little bit and how am I going to do that I think I want to Let's get myself organised so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to bring you out a little bit. There we are. And I'd like to 
just give the impression of something here in the foreground. So, I want to drop a bit of water in here and then I'm using this coma brush and I'm coming into my cascade green and from the wet I'm just going to introduce You see, what I've done there is I've curled it round him so that it's pointing your eyes into Foxy. You're looking into him now. If we take it up too far or we bring it out this side of the painting, we lose him. I don't want to do that. So all I really want to do now, this side as well, is just dampen a piece here and come in with both Cascade Green and then I'm going into sap green on the other side and using both I'm going to come in here and just pull both colours up and through in this area here to give myself a little bit of texture and something of interest going on here. I want to soften the base of that purely and simply by coming in and doing this. control that with the water and that gives you a little kind of hillock that we're looking at there. It gives our eyes something else to look at doesn't it rather than just the green around the base as we had it. All right so the next step here would be to think about just gently, gently coming in and using the orange again and I'm going to take some of this and this time I want some flicks that are going to be hard edges rather than the softness of the previous orange that I threw in here. I want some bits and pieces around here that are just interesting. Little flowers. Some maybe up here on top of grasses that we just put in. And here. And I'm also going to flip a little bit of the green so this is the Cascade Green and the Sap Green on the brush at the same time. And I want to drop in some of that too here. And a bit over the tail, as though there were grasses and things growing up. And it settles him into the landscape. And I would declare that all done.